everybody, it's Darcy Lynn Deal from Lippy Girl Makeup here, and I'm here to talk about lead and lipstick, and it's our third installment in the cosmetic chemistry series. If you missed the first two uh, segments, what is organic and what are parabens, I'll put them in the discussion uh, box below, as well as I'll put links right here to those videos in case you want to watch it before or after this video. Um, but let's get going and talking about lead and lipstick because it's a hot topic and I know there's lots of questions out there. So I'm going to start today's session with a little bit of a quote, so bear with me. This quote is from the father of toxicology. His name is Paracelsus, and the quote says, Everything is a poison. Nothing is without poison. Only dose can make a thing, not a poison. And so let's break down that quote because it's a really important quote, and it's an important part of medicine and toxicology. So um, that quote says that basically everything contains certain things that aren't good for you. And the only thing that's going to determine whether something's good for you, um, and different to you, or bad for you is dose. And uh, what dose is, is just how much you take. Um, it's concentration, it's um, amount. Um, and so an example of that would be, um, you can have one beer and feel good, you can feel tipsy, you can feel happy. Um, you can drink 30 beers and you will die, uh, your liver will fail. So that's an example of dosage and toxicology. Uh, when I tell people that alcohol is a poison, people are like, alcohol is not a poison. Alcohol is awesome. <laughs> and that's because all that matter matters with poisons is dosage. Um, a small amount of a poison could be completely safe. And then there's a limit to a poison where once you've hit that limit, it's very dangerous. Um, and that's what a poison is, and that's what the study of toxicology is all about. My hair is really bothering me, so I'm so sorry I keep flipping it all around. Okay, I'm not going to touch it now. Let's get going. Um, so there's been a lot of concern about lead and lipstick, and that's pretty much because Anytime you say lead, it's uh, it's a heart stopper because everybody knows about lead poisoning and our history with lead poisoning, uh, like lead in paints and stuff like that. And I'm going to touch on that in this video um, because, again, we're going to keep coming back to something can be a poison, but the most important thing about a poison is dosage. Um, so... There's been this concern about lead in lipsticks, and the FDA responded to that concern by studying 400 lipsticks. And what they did is they picked 400 lipsticks, and they wanted to make it a good sample of the market base. They took 400 lipsticks from national brand lipsticks because these are more widely used than uh, boutique brands. And they basically wanted a good subset of lipsticks from the market and what the majority of people were using. And they use state-of-the-art procedures and equipment. These are not tests for lead that anybody could run. These are very, very highly sophisticated tests that were developed specifically to get thresholds and measurements of lead that nobody else could. So the FDA published this report, and I'll put the link in my blog below if you want to see this report, because a lot of people refer to this report without actually seeing it. Um, 400 lipsticks, and they ranged from 7.19 parts per million to 0 0.026 parts per million. And so the FDA released that report, as well as their conclusions on the report, and their conclusions on the report were that the levels of lead in lipstick were not a concern. However, the interpretation of that report by the general public and um, a couple of organizations was that of horror. Um, oh my gosh, um, lipsticks contain lead. And um, as a chemist and scientist, um, we weren't concerned about this because um, our response was, of course lipsticks contain lead. Um, everything from the ground contains lead. Um, and I want to give you a little bit of a comparison there. So if we have uh, lead levels and list lipsticks ranging from 7.19 on the high scale, and that's very high, uh, the highest lipsticks were about double what the average lipstick was in lead content. Um, the average soil has anywhere between 10 parts per million lead to 20 parts per million lead. So I just want to clarify what parts per million means. Part per million means one milligram per kilogram. In other words, 
0.01 grams per 1,000 grams. And so it's an extremely small unit. Um, and I think that it's good here to tie in also um, the lead concentration in paint because uh, we all know about the lead paint scare and obviously reference it when we feel concerns about lead. So um, in lead paint, one small chip of lead paint contains 10 to hundreds of milligrams of lead. And so to compare that back to the lipsticks, even the highest containing lead lipsticks, were at, which were at seven parts per million, in order to get that much uh, lead, you'd have to eat 1.5 to 10.5 liters of lipstick um, to have the same amount of lead contained in one small chip of paint. And I don't know about you, and I've seen all these crazy calculations um, about lipstick eaten or consumed in a lifetime. It takes a long time to consume 1.5 liters to 10.5 liters of lipstick. And um, lead poisoning took a lot more than just one small chip of paint. And so I hope that gives you kind of a reference as to um, how low the concentration of lead in lipsticks is. Um, lead is a natural component of the earth. It's found everywhere. And like I said, it's found in dirt. It's found in dust. It's found from every, in everything that uh, comes from the earth, from strawberries to dust to plants and herbs and trees. Um, lead's been on earth <laughs> since the earth existed. And... Um, so we can't avoid it and I don't, um, I actually don't like it when my friends and family are scared by lead because it's everywhere and we can't avoid it and the last thing I'd want is a report coming out saying that uh, the truth which is that soil has 10 to 20 parts per million lead in it and people opting for petroleum products and uh, synthetic products to replace soil, um, something as natural and amazing as soil being replaced by petroleum products because um, of the word lead or the concept of lead. I actually love watching DIY videos on YouTube. I'm like addicted to them and I ran across one video uh, where a girl was making lipsticks out of Crayola crayons because she was so concerned about lead in lipsticks. And so basically making lip products out of uh, petroleum and FD&C dyes in order to avoid lead. And um, you can avoid lead by using petroleum products and FD&C dyes because they are synthetic and processed. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're better than natural products. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to say in this video today is um, if the report that says that uh, lead and lipstick there's lead in lipstick scares you so much that you start making decisions uh, to use petroleum products and FD&C dyes instead of mineral based products that will sadden me deeply because um, minerals are natural and amazing and have so many benefits to them and opting for something like FD&C dyes which are completely synthetic and manufactured and everything that I'm against um, makes me very sad um, certain brands will have more lead in them than other brands and that's because um, one of the ways that uh, lead is getting into lipsticks is through the minerals and through the ingredients. Like I said, everything that comes from the earth could contain lead and so there are purification methods for uh, and processes for minerals and ingredients that make sure you get the top quality ingredients and they'll contain less lead. Um, as a lipstick manufacturer, when I go to buy lipstick ingredients um, like pigments, um, the, the the manufacturers that send me pigments sell me pigments have different levels of quality of those pigments, and the lower levels of quality may contain or do contain more lead than the higher level uh, pigments, and so. Um, like a lot of boutique brands and there's great natural brands out there and we make sure we buy the highest quality minerals possible and that limits the amount of lead that we have. Um, but even, I mean, those national brands that are buying just, you know, the base um, 
uh, level of minerals that just meet, uh, they do meet the health authorities limit for lead, um, that they're still well within um, the healthy limit for concentration of lead. I think if there's anything that we should hate these brands for, it's animal testing, uh, use of petroleum, and chemical preservatives. Um, I think that their lead content is shocking, only that it's um, so much higher than other brands. I mean, that, that would be my only concern, uh, not the fact that they contain lead, but they contain more lead that they're testing on animals that they're using a whole bunch of chemical crap and so that's kind of my focus of today's lesson on lead and lipstick is um, be realistic and use natural products and look after your health that way and uh, don't get caught up in some of these bandwagons which um, can really scare you and turn you off of natural products and maybe drive you towards um, things that are not natural and probably have greater evils to them than something as natural and uh, naturally occurring as lead. So I hope you got something out of today's lesson and uh, I hope you turn in next week. Next week we'll be, be talking about pigments, minerals, and dyes. And so it will tie in nicely to today's topic. So tune in next week for the next episode of Cosmetic Chemistry and I'll see you then. Okay, thanks.